Hello YouTube. Okay, today we're going to review the Microsoft Surface RT. Now I have it. Now this is what I carried in. This is this is a netbook bag about three years ago. Uh, I, I carried my Dell Mini 10V in it. For those of you that watched videos back then, I carried my Asus EPC 1015 PEM in this. And as is tradition, now it's carrying my Microsoft Surface since this is, since that is what it replaced essentially and that's part of my uh, purchasing decision which I'll get into later so netbook bags fit the surface perfectly along with other 10 inch tablets I think they'll do just fine in netbook bags if you guys want to find something that will fit these really well this is just a simple sleeve let's pull the surface out and move the bag aside here's the surface itself I have the type keyboard for it which has the real buttons So let's put it down here and let it there. Now, many of you may be wondering, <clears throat> why did I get the Surface RT over the Surface Pro? Now, when it comes down to, when that, that whole purchasing decision to me really comes down to what you want to use it for, uh, and also money. Personally, I don't think what you get out of the Surface Pro is worth the money they're asking for. I think it's too much. Uh, but they have to cover costs somehow, and they're the only game in town as far as these hybrids go right now. I mean, they're not the only game in town, but they're, they're them and maybe two other companies are the few that have things going on. You get my point. There's, it's, it's something new that you know doesn't have a whole lot of room for economies of scale yet, so, so it can't be cheap. So it can't be cheap. So... That's why I got the Surface RT. Also, you got to think about what this was replacing. In my particular case, this was replacing a netbook. And the netbook, I, what I used the netbook for was pretty much internet browsing and schoolwork. That was really it. And I can do just that, actually a little bit more than that, on this. So what I used in my netbook for, I can do on this as well as have fun with some of the new uh, modern UI apps that make Windows RT and Windows 8 what they are. Now, <clears throat> hardware-wise, this is a fantastic device. It is pretty rock solid. Uh, I like the th I liked how it feels hefty. It doesn't feel like very heavy, but it feels hefty, which I really like in a device. I don't like devices that feel flimsy and plasticky and just like they'll they'll when they fall out of your hand, they'll just break apart. This thing actually feels pretty sturdy. Uh, and the other thing I love is the uh, this flip out stand. It makes it makes tablets like this really stand out from the crowd because on most tablets, like let's use the iPad for instance, you have to buy a case to put around the iPad to make it a stand. Whereas with this, you already have a stand built in. There's no need to buy a case. Although you can buy cases for these that do have built in stands that let you set the angle a little bit more like that. So, yeah, there you have it. So hardware-wise, I like it. The, uh, the cameras, as you saw in a previous video where we tested them, the cameras are pretty darn good for what they are. Uh, the, it, they adjust white balance, at least the software does. I don't know if that's the hardware or the software, but either way, it adjusts white balance extremely quickly, which is pretty awesome, I think, especially when you're shooting video. Um, the way it adjusts white balance far surpasses my iPhone 4S, I can tell you that, which is normally what I use to film videos. Uh, what do I think of this idea? Take the keyboard off, make it just a plain old tablet, and put the keyboard on when you need it. I like it. That's flexibility, and flexibility is something I definitely welcome. So, hardware-wise, the thing is very flexible, very sturdy. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, what do I think of the keyboard? The touch keyboard is the one that uses membrane buttons. Um, I would, I would akin, I'd say they are pretty akin to like microwave buttons. Not quite as you know nasty as that, but uh, the the concept is the same. There's no tactile feeling when you type on the touch keyboard. However, what I have is the type keyboard, and that uses mechanical key switches in the keys, despite the keyboard being extremely thin. So. 
it kind of give, it gives you a nice typing feel. And the, the, the reason I got that type of keyboard is because I'm going to be doing a lot of typing on this. Typing, you know, messages to people, typing papers. I'm going to be using this thing to write school papers on. You can, you, you bet your bottom dollar I'll be doing that. So I wanted a keyboard that would, you know, fit the bill for that particular use. And I think this does that very well. The trackpad? Uh, the trackpad's not bad. Uh, it, 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 the motion is really good. The only thing, I haven't yet uh, figured out how to turn off tap to click. I, granted, I haven't researched that a whole lot, but when I looked in the Windows mouse settings, it just said it was sort of a generic mouse, the trackpad, so I don't know. I, that will probably require more research, but that's the only gripe I've had with the trackpad, and that's a gripe I have with any trackpad, not just this one, that tap to click is annoying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, other than that, the keyboards are great. One thing I really like about the keyboard is you can also it also doubles as a as a lap stand. So let's say you want to you're sitting in a chair and you want to put this in your lap to watch a video or something. You can fold this keyboard back. It goes against the stand here, and this can sit in your lap just like that. And when you move the key when you bend the keyboard back like this, it disables the keyboard's elect keyboard electronically so that it, like if your knee hits a button it won't affect it. At least that's the case I've seen with the touch keyboard. I assume the type keyboard is the same deal. <clears throat> so, you know, there you have it. So, hardware wise, good. Very good. I like it a lot. I think the hybrid concept is a really cool idea and I, I honestly think it's cool enough that it will probably go somewhere. And I. From what I've read, Microsoft was really just trying to get an idea out there, and I like their idea here. I really, really like the idea. Now, <clears throat> what was Microsoft trying to do with the Surface RT and the Surface Pro? They're kind of filling a gap in the market, I think. People like me, who are more technically minded, like uh, devices that are real computers, you know, something like me. This, this for me filled that void because despite it being a tablet, despite it having an ARM architecture, it's still a real computer and you can use it like a real computer as well as a tablet. And that's what I really like. It combines the best of both worlds. And that's what they were trying to do with Windows 8 and Windows RT. Windows 8's the same deal. If you go use a Windows 8 computer with a touch screen, it makes perfect sense and is a very enjoyable experience in my opinion. Same deal with the Surface because it's a touch screen computer with a keyboard and everything. So I think I think it's a great idea. I really like it. Now the specifications on this are uh, pretty similar to other tablets actually. Uh, it uses an NVIDIA Tegra processor running at 1.3 gigahertz, I think. I'll correct that if I'm wrong. It's a quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3. Uh, it has 2 gigabytes of RAM on board. You can't upgrade that. I think it's soldered to the board. Uh, it has Wi-Fi, ABGN Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0. The battery is a 31.5 watt-hour battery. The display is a 10.6 inch HD display, 1366 by 768, 16 by 9, 5 point multi-touch. So it's a pretty modern display. Uh, some people may scoff at the uh, resolution comparing it to the iPad, but remember the pixel density is smaller on here uh, because the video probably cannot handle as big as a pixel density and, and the, uh, the, panel, the LCD panels for uh, screens like that are a lot more expensive, so it would end up costing more which is probably why the Surface Pro costs more. Anyway, it has two 720p HD life cams, front and rear facing. That's the one up here and one right behind that. One megapixel each. Two microphones, which are on the top here. There's one there and one there. Here and here. Let me zoom in on those. Those are the two microphones right there. One here and one here. So it does have stereo microphones, which I think is pretty cool. The uh, da, da, da. It has full-size USB 2.0 on the side, right over there. It has full-size USB 2.0 on the side right there. It has micro HDMI, and there's the charging port, of course. So The fact that it has full-size USB was another thing that attracted me to the uh, 
the Surface over many other tablets. A lot of others used mini USB or something, so or some other variant of USB that you would have to buy a dongle for to connect a flash drive. That's the other. Th that's the other thing about this that attracted it to me because having a full size USB port still brings back the idea of a computer. It's a hybrid. Some review. Some reviews that I've read online say. It's a tablet, but some moments scream, Computer! In my mind, that's a good thing. Because that's exactly what they were trying to do. They're trying to have a hybrid experience, have both the having both the experience of a traditional PC while at the same time having the experience of a tablet. And on a device like this, I think that makes perfect sense. Marrying the two on a Microsoft Surface makes total sense. Now what else does it have? It has a micro SDXC slot, so you can put very high capacity uh, micro SD cards in there. Uh, it has a headset jack, an HD video out port, which is HDMI. I mentioned that already. Uh, cover port, which is for the, uh, the keyboard here. And an ambient light sensor, which is right there, I believe. An accelerometer, so you can play your accelerometer games. A gyroscope, a compass. Uses a 24 watt power supply, has a one year limited hardware warranty from Microsoft, and it comes with Microsoft Office 2013. That's a big, big, big win for me. I'm glad that it came with Microsoft Office because that pretty much gives me the option of using this as a school computer. I don't have to buy it extra, it already comes with it, which is good considering the price tag is pretty high for one of these for what you get. But I think as a package deal, it's definitely worth it for, for what I'm going to use it for. This was a netbook replacement. This is the way I'm, this is the perspective that I'm coming towards this device with. I'm, I've replaced my Asus EPC 1015 EPEM PEM with uh, this Microsoft Surface. And I think, and it can do everything that my EPC did everything that I used it for anyway, which was doing schoolwork, browsing the internet casually, uh, playing DOSBox. You need to jailbreak this device to do that though. Uh, and amongst other things. Either way, it's still a fantastic device for what I replaced it with. And it's more fun. That's m another reason I got this, is because this device is fun to me. It's things like this that are new, new concepts, I just think are really cool. So, that's a, that's a whole other reason for buying it for me it was just the fun factor. So here we are on the win on uh, the Microsoft Surface RT. No. What do I think of the screen? The screen is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The animations are very smooth in my experience. Like look at this. It's very good. Very very smooth. So, this is just like Windows 8 in every respect. You get the desktop. I still need to change my background. You can see a bunch of the jailbroken apps I have up on the side there. And we'll talk about that in a minute. That's another reason I was compelled to get this. Oh, God, stop that. So, very smooth experience. Now, what do I think of Microsoft Word on this? It's just like the desktop version. Let's open Word here. Now I can go on here and just start typing away. And, <clears throat> you know, things are just well underway after that point. So I really like that. I really like that a lot. Quite an enjoyable experience. Now, as far as that, that's the desktop experience to the extent you get out of the box. It's just Microsoft Word and, you know, managing your files with uh, Windows Explorer and all that fun stuff. Now, I've managed to put my computer icon back on the desktop, so it's still a computer. I mean, that screams computer right there, the My Computer window right there. So the tablet experience, what do I think of it? I love the modern UI. It is fantastic to use. It's very smooth. Um, 
live tiles are pretty awesome because you don't have to necessarily go in there to see what's going on. Like, I saw that uh, U.S. bombing was there, so I might. So that attracts me to go in there and take a look at this. Mars could have supported life. So it takes you to the Bing Daily Mail. Judge pressures Obama for drone policy details. So you can click on a story and then read about it. Which I think is really cool. That's just the built-in news stuff. That's Bing News. It's built in. So the experience is very nice and very fluid in my opinion. This is the email app. So this is my Yahoo account. Uh, here's an email from Newegg as an example. So you have your email over here, which you can scroll up and down through, and you have your uh, you, the actual email is over here. So let's say I want to reply to them. Hit that button, you get your reply, reply all forward. The mail app is pretty straightforward. Then I could uh, write my email up here. The email app is really nice, I think. I, re I really like it. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, calendar. It's a calendar. You make events, you schedule yourself. Uh, can you make alarms? Yeah, you can make alarms. Except that they're called reminders, just to be nice about it. So, it's a calendar app. It does the same thing any other calendar app does. You can make events, uh, you can have it bug you when you need to go someplace, etc., etc. Uh, over here you have people, which is just a bunch of contacts, really. That's, that's nothing to get all excited about. Photos. Now, photos isn't that exciting either. I mean, it's just... <clears throat> it just lets you view photos. <laughs> Doesn't get more simple than that. Messaging, I'm not sure what that is. I believe it's MSN, or, or Windows Live Messenger, or whatever's left of that, which is going to go away anyway. I'm really not sure what that does. Um, I've, I don't have a reason to use it, which is uh, why I haven't paid much attention to it. Here's the weather app. And here's my neck of the woods, Chadsford, Pennsylvania. Which, and uh, here's the weather we have right now. 52, 40, 46, 43, 49. Some spring break, huh? <laughs> so I love the Bing Weather app. The Bing Weather app is fantastic. You can swipe to the right here and you get an hourly forecast, maps of temperature, uh, satellites, national, regional, Doppler radar, precipitation maps, and satellite and cloud cover maps, interstate, airport impact, severe weather alerts. You get a lot of detail in this app, which is really nice. And you get graphs of historical weather. There's temperature, there's rainfall, and there's snow days. So you can get a lot of detailed information in the built-in weather app, which says a lot comparing it to iOS, where the built-in weather app pretty much gives you nothing except for, the app, except for what you see here. Uh, which, in my mind, is pathetic. You have to download something like Weatherbug on iOS to get anywhere with uh, weather. <clears throat> so, on to the next app. Uh, Internet Explorer and the mobile experience. Internet Explorer 10, on the surface, is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's a great browser. Uh, as you can see, you can use it to browse YouTube. You know, check your comments. It's a full desktop browser on a tablet, and I really like that, including Flash. So you can do a whole lot on this tablet uh, as far as internet browsing goes. And figuring out, this is probably where I'm going to be spending most of my time using this tablet. The browser is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with Internet Explorer 10 in the mobile experience. And for those of you asking, can you get Firefox, Chrome? On Windows RT, you cannot. However, on Windows 8, you can. You can on the desktop. I'm not sure about um, uh, the store yet. Uh, so, here's an example of playing a YouTube video. It's playing an app or an ad right now. So let me skip the ad. It'll go to a YouTube video of my unboxing of this particular surface. Look what I got today! <laughs> finally, finally, I'm able to afford this. I got the Microsoft Surface, the Surface RT. As you can see, video playback is just fine. It's very smooth, very, very nice. I'll switch it to 720p. Oh, it is on 720p. So let me move further in the video. Oops. Just fine. Now of course it has the stand in the back here. So as you can see, video playback with YouTube and other Flash stuff is just fine. There's no issues with that at all. 
Uh, I'm very happy with that. So Internet Explorer is just the same as it is on, the, on a, uh, a desktop, such as you know your traditional computer. It's exactly the same as far as the Metro experience goes. I've used it on Windows 8 itself, and it, it's exactly the same. It's great. It's a great experience. Now, this, for the same, for uh, for those of you who like the traditional experience, you also have a desktop version of Internet Explorer still in um, uh, Windows RT on the Surface. However, uh, these two versions of Internet Explorer do not talk to each other, so just bear that in mind. I mean, that's just something you need to keep in mind, I should say. Uh, <clears throat> maps. So let's take a look at maps. I have traffic patterns turned on, and look at New York City. <laughs> look how bad the traffic is over there. <laughs> So it's a it's a typical maps application. You can change the map style to aerial view, so you can look at it like this, which I think is cool. Bing Bing Maps I'm a pretty big fan of, along with Google Maps. Both of them are good. Uh, I like the road signs there. That's kind of nice. There's the Long Island Expre uh, Expressway, I think. Uh, there's the battery. That's there's the battery down there. So there you go, Manhattan. There's the ferry. Look at that. That's pretty cool. There's the Brooklyn Bay Tunnel. So, it's a maps application. <laughs> I don't really use them, so it's not a big deal for me. I usually use uh, Google Earth a lot of the time or Bing Directions or something. Uh, I'm really not a huge... I really don't use maps all that much to look at stuff. SkyDrive. Now, that SkyDrive is Microsoft's cloud storage. And that's self-explanatory. You can store your files and stuff in the cloud. <clears throat> now here's the news app. Here's the news app that's built in. Let me go back to the beginning just to show you what it's like. Here is the. Uh, here's the beginning. Here's the. Uh, here's a story on Kim Jong Un with North Korea. So I'll double tap that, and it brings you to the story. And then you can read about North Korea. U.S. beefing up to uh, respond to North Korea. And it reads a lot like a magazine or a newspaper. I really like this experience. It's really nice. Now, I'm hoping I can get like a Wall Street Journal app or something like that, and Bloomberg and uh, things like that. So, there you have it. That is the news app. Now, the store. There's the store. This is where you download all your uh, modern UI applications. And it's a store. Let's go to top free as an example. So there you go. There's things like Skype, Google Search, Netflix, YouTube Player, Adobe Reader Touch, uh, the the uh, Microsoft Solitaire Collection. You know, you can basically you just browse through your apps and pick which one you like. And if you don't, if you're trying to find a specific one, you can literally you don't even have to do this and go to search. You can if you want, but you don't have to. You can just start typing. Like for example, I'll type YouTube. Hit enter, and it'll find all the YouTube apps that are out for uh, Windows RT, along with some extraneous ones that probably aren't exactly amazing, but it gets the job done. Now, a lot of people I've heard say that Windows 8, Windows RT, and Windows 8 don't have enough Metro apps yet. It's a great experience, but don't have enough apps yet. That will evolve as the platform evolves. It's a very young platform right now. This only came out uh, at the end of last year, so it needs time. It needs at least a year, I'd say, to uh, really come, come to its own. But so far, what I've seen has been really good. Uh, so you have things here like games, music, video, and camera. Now, games, I think, uh, syncs up with your live account for Xbox or for Windows live games or what have you. Yeah, Xbox games, Windows games. Yeah, so it's just Xbox and Windows games. That's all it is. It's just Xbox stuff. Uh, music, it plays music. Videos, it plays video. Those are just a music and video player. That's all carried over from the Zune uh, camera. Or the camera app is pretty fantastic. Hey, check it out. 
I'm right here. Uh, and now you can see the camera I'm filming with. So the camera app is pretty fantastic, I would say. Uh, I reviewed the camera in another video, and the camera has fantastic white balance uh, adjustment. And overall, people have panned the cameras saying they're horrible. I think they, they're pretty good, actually. Uh, they're better than some of the things I've seen come out of Apple's. Uh, come out of Apple Apple's camp as far as uh, auto adjustment goes. As far as quality goes, eh, it, it's all right, but uh, it's a one point meg it's a one megapixel camera, so don't expect much. I'm I'm pretty sure that these cameras were designed for the use of video conferencing and not much else. Maybe some profile, maybe some silly profile pictures and photo apps and things like that. Now what else do we have here? We have sports. Uh, I guess that's traveling or something. Here's the stock stock app so you can take so if you play this so if you're in the stock market you can take a look at how Dow Jones is doing how S&P is doing and there you go Bing Finance so that's what this is there's your graph there is financial news which is interesting videos from CNBC Bloomberg Wall Street Journal live bloom more a lot more Bloomberg so the financial one is really good for those of you that are uh, in that particular field. Now here are the diff here's uh, the different office apps. You have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. That's what it comes with. You don't get Outlook because you already have Mail. What's the point? Uh, here's some apps I downloaded. Things like iHeartRadio, Netflix, Kindle, Skype, Fresh Paint. You know you've, you've seen these before. Uh, I'm sure. But iHeartRadio is internet radio. Uh, Facebook app called Facebook Touch. Netflix app, which is excellent, so you can watch your Netflix TV shows and movies on the go. Kindle, so you can uh, look at your Kindle books and PDFs and things that you've synced to the cloud using Kindle. Like, I'll give you an example. Here's a textbook that I'm using for my history class right now. I can look at that on here if I don't have my Kindle with me uh, or don't have access to a PC to take a look at the book on my computer. Well, this is a computer, actually, so technically, there you go. So let's go back here. That's one irritating thing. When you go back to the menu, it starts off at the beginning rather than where you just were. <clears throat> IM Plus, that's an IM client for protocols like AIM, Windows Live Messenger, Yahoo, Google Talk. I, it probably doesn't cover all of those, but, you know, it's that general sort of idea. So there's the Skype app, which, in my opinion, is not the best implementation of Skype in the world. Uh, the interface is a little bit all over the place, but it does work. It works very well. Uh, <clears throat> Fresh Paint, which is a painting program. Now, when I was looking at other Windows 8-based tablets to see if I would had any interest in them, other than a Windows, other than a Windows RT-based one like this uh, Surface RT here, uh, I took a look at an Atom-based one running this particular app called Fresh Paint. Uh, one thing that I noticed on a particular Atom-based tablet it was a Lenovo tablet. It used Power VR a video card in it. So when I try to use this app, painting like this would lag unbearably. But on the Surface RT, it's a smooth. It's butter smooth. It's fantastic. Look at that. So much for coloring inside the lines. But you saw that. It's buttery smooth. It's perfect. On the Atom-based tablet with the Power VR graphics, it was terrible. So that was another reason. This is this app was another reason I ended up going with the Windows RT because it seemed to be the best option in that price range. Come on. Oh boy. This is one of the first bugs I've run into. The app doesn't want to quit. I think this thing froze. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it froze. It full on froze. See if holding down the button on the top does anything. That did something. So, <laughs> that's the first time that's happened. I haven't had the surface freeze before. So, it's as you can see by that just happening, it's still Windows. So things like this still happen, but luckily, you know, that wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, 
But yeah, as I was saying, that Fresh Paint app, uh, when I was testing that out on some Atom based tablets, it ran like total garbage compared to the, uh, the Surface RT. So that's another reason I ended up going with this. And I'm glad I did, because my experience so far, other than that little hiccup just then, that freeze up, I haven't had that happen yet. That's actually the first time that's happened that I've already, and I've had it almost a week. So, you know, there you go. Bugs can be fixed. That can be fixed through Windows Update, whatever happened there. But yeah, there's Fresh Paint. Uh, there's the Microsoft Solitaire collection, so. So you can still play Solitaire on Windows. <laughs> Now Windows is good for more than Solitaire and Minesweeper. Now you can get Mahjong, you can get Angry Birds, you can get all, all the rest of them. <laughs> Takes an awful long time to load uh, Solitaire. I know how to play Solitaire. Go away. <laughs> I unlocked an achievement by pushing the button. Oh, that's ridiculous. So the solitaire experience is pretty nice, actually. Jack, king, queen, I think. So I can put the ten there. Yeah, so it's it's solitaire. <laughs> and it shows your time and your score up there. So it's it's the Microsoft solitaire you see on Windows 8. Wow, I'm noticing some lag here for some reason. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but ever since I rebooted it, it's been a little bit laggy. Where is, uh... Let me close that down. You have to, you have, that's really finicky to, you drag from like right under the webcam down all the way to close an app. It's a very strange way of closing apps, but I'm okay with that. Here's a Facebook app called Facebook Touch. This is an example of what you would get as far as Facebook Touch apps go. I'd assume it'd be kind of, uh, oh yeah, look at all these people. Hey, shout outs to everybody. <laughs> So I can, yeah, there's, there's an annoying ad down there, but it was a free app, so what do you expect? Uh, so you get your chat over here, and you get your Facebook stuff over here. So I can look at all my funny pictures, all that stuff, and chat with people over here. And, you know, I can double tap that to look at uh, that picture individually. Leave now. So it's a... Uh, you know, it's a pretty comprehensive app, and you have your notification center up here. You have everything you can do, as far as I can tell, that you can do on the, the iOS version of the app. So I'm pretty happy with that. So Facebook Touch is a good app to use. Uh, IM Plus, that's an IM client, as I said before. Dropbox. Now, Dropbox doesn't actually sync uh, your files. You can have access to them, but it doesn't sync them onto your computer, which is kind of annoying, I think. It really should do that. Here's a few games. Here's another game called Bubble Breaker. Uh, this may remind you guys of certain other games. Reminds me of Bejewel a little bit, except that you're just clicking where there's a lot of different... with the same color. A lot of the same color, rather. My talking is not good when I'm playing games. <laughs> so, games like that. Here's a YouTube player. So you can just, you can use a YouTube app itself to watch videos as well. This is the, one of the uh, more popular YouTube apps. So, here is my favorites list. There's my subscriptions. I'll have some very strange... There's Retro Chat. There's a Retro Chat video. So here's the interface you get. You can select uh, what video you want to be in. 10, 40p, 720p, 1080p. 720 is fine for this, I think. Full screen the video. And there's Chad playing the organ there. Swipe up from the bottom. You can pause the video there. Has no problem playing videos at all. It's great. It's a really nice way to watch YouTube, actually. Then there's apps like this, like Unit Conversion, just in case you uh, just felt compelled to convert something like hectometers into uh, rods. 
fathoms, and chains. <laughs> so, you know, you can edit your measurements and stuff like that. So, simple tools like that, you know, like any tablet probably would. Uh, there's my there's an eBay app, so you can check your eBay listings. Minesweeper, Bubble Star, which is uh, a lot like a bust a move game. So these are all free games, by the way. I haven't used a paid app yet. This is a lot like bust a move. So I'm horrible at this. Wow, I'm doing really badly. Because I wasn't paying attention. So it's, you know, simple games like this, casual games. They're a lot of fun on here, I think. So, games like that. It's like bust a move type of game. These are the games you get for free, which are pretty good. You can get stuff like uh, Space Invaders. Ah, I hit the Bing ad by mistake. No! <laughs> Like here's an odd version of Space Invaders that you control with the touch screen, as you can see. You can get things like that. Uh, the apps are pretty cool. Uh, then there are games like this. Sheep Launcher 8. I was talking with uh, UXW Bill about this one and just how amused I was by it. You launch a sheep up in the air and control it with the accelerometer. Let me move this back a little bit so you can see. It launches a sheep straight up in the air. You control where it is with the accelerometer. Come on, sheepy! This game is just silly, in my opinion. It's nothing, like, ridiculously engrossing or entertaining. It's just absolutely silly. And for those... Oh, yeah, I got a score. Cool. <laughs> that game is just amusing, which is why it's even on there in the first place. So, we have other things on there. You can get things like... Um, Pocket Politician, Reddit Hub, which is just for looking at Reddit, MU7800. That is a Atari emulator, believe it or not. Play Atari today! <laughs> so you can get things like 2600 games, 7800 games. Like, for example, here's a set... Let's look at an Atari 7800 game. Let's look at the, that version of Centipede. Confusing thing about this, you have to press reset like the real console. Now I'm using the keyboard to control this, so I can play old 7800 games on here, no problem. And this is free too. Now this is just cool, and this is stuff you can actually get in the store. So you can play old games on it. And there's another addition to that I can show you later. Uh, SNES 8X is another uh, emulator for Super Nintendo games. I have not tried that yet, so I can't vouch for how good it is yet, but it does work. I know that. Khan Academy, I used that for my statistics class. Uh, they have their own app. RetroCalc. So this is a calculator that you can uh, move over to the side there and then leave it, leave it on the side while you do something else there, which is kind of cool. So you can move that off to the side while doing something else. I think that's a cool idea. Pocket Politician. See, I'll open that app and you still have the calculator next to it. So you can be, you can, uh, be like writing a paper and then, or I don't know, you know, looking at, um, looking at something to do with finances on this side and then use the calculator on the left. Which is kind of cool, I think. So, you know, there you have it. So, this is a pocket politician. This is an example of sil another silly app. It's a soundboard. So, let's do uh, Richard Nixon. I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. So,
So, you know, that's a soundboard, things like that. So that's pretty cool. That's that's the stuff I've messed around with so far on that's official. So after showing you some of these apps and especially the Fresh Paint app, really I think made my decision clear as far as performance goes. Uh, what do I think of the tablet experience of Windows RT? I like it. I really like it a lot. Uh, you saw me go over some of the uh, apps you, you, that come with it. Uh, and the apps have a lot to offer out of the box, which I really like, especially the weather app, the email app, and the fact that Internet Explorer is a full-on desktop browser on a tablet I really, really like, especially the fact that it has Flash included. Uh, I like the fact that it comes with Microsoft Word, the, the full-on Office suite. I think that's a, also a very huge value add, especially for what I was going to use this for and what I am using it for. Things like Netflix, Skype, Kindle, Fresh Paint, you know, all these apps are fantastic. And I think it's going to take a while for more apps to come out and for this ecosystem to grow. There are not enough apps right now, I don't think. But the fact is that the platform is young. It's going to take a while to grow. And, you know, that, that takes probably a year or two to come into full swing, so I think it's going to take a while to fully bake. Uh, but, I like what I, but I like what I see so far. I like the fact that I can get my Kindle app on here, Netflix, Skype, stuff you use all the time. You know, stuff that you normally think would be here. Dropbox, eBay, uh, and emulators of old games, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh... So that experience is really good. What do I think of the desktop? Uh, I like it. Uh, I know some people don't, but I like it because it 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 really... I, I understand what Microsoft is trying to do here. They're trying to marry the tablet and the desktop into one unified experience between all your devices, which is a great idea. It's a great idea on paper. Uh, Canonical is doing that with Ubuntu by having Unity on all its devices, but that's an interface rather than an entire operating system. So. This is an entire comprehensive package on, on like all your devices in the home. Windows Phone, your tablet, and your computer. So it's a great idea on paper because it makes everything less confusing. But the fact is that this is such a drastic step for a lot of people that it's confusing even going to this type of thing. I think that will change over time, but as far as I'm concerned, this experience right now is pretty darn good. Uh, I'm happy with it. Now, there are other things, like jailbreaking. As you can see, I have a bunch of applications on here, like DOSBox, Audacity, Notepad++, PuTTY, the, uh, that are jailbroken applications. Now, on a surface, what that means, it doesn't mean you can run x86 applications. It means you can run unsigned applications that have been compiled for the ARM architecture. Now, what I had to do is go on a website that had to do with the XDA developers and download a jailbreaking application called SDL, or not SDL, um, 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 RT jailbreak. I'm hitting the wrong button there. And what that does is it basically lets Windows run unsigned applications. So I can run the exploit. What it does is it exploits something in the kernel that lets you run unsigned applications, and apparently this exploit's been around for a long time. Now you now let's run the run this just so I can show you all this. It goes into Windows PowerShell to do all this, so there that screams computer right there. <laughs> that screams computer as well waiting for uptime to reach two minutes, so gotta wait for it. Press volume up, volume down, or mute now. So I'll press volume up. And there you go, it's done. Now I can run jailbroken applications. For example, here's Audacity. Now, when you get these jailbroken applications, they've been compiled by the XDA developers, so you have to go to their website to download their compiled version. It's not like it'll run anything you download off the internet. 
anything that's been compiled by the XDA developers will work, and that's mostly open source applications like this. For example, here's Audacity. This is just a test showing that Audacity works on the uh, Surface RT, and it works very well without any lag or anything. This is just a test showing that Audacity works on the uh, Surface RT, and it works very well without any lag or anything. So these applications are native. They're, they're ported applications, but they're native to the ARM architecture, so they all work just fine. Uh, if you're wondering what this app is, that was just something I was um, testing for somebody. It's not important. Here's Notepad++. So you can write code on your surface, making it very much like a computer. This part, I think, is a lot of fun. And this, you could do the same thing on a Surface Pro, but this is $500. The Surface Pro is like $900, so, you know, it's, it's a big price difference, and I think that's important. And here's Putty which is near and dear to me since I do some server administration. So I can run Putty on here, which is pretty awesome. And here's another one that was near and dear to me, DOSBox. I can run DOSBox on here. Let me, uh... There you go. Mount C, C, DOS, oops, DOS games. So I can go on here and run DOS games. Now, the thing about DOSBox on here is it does not do 3D very well, so running Duke Nukem 3D is not great, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But something 2D will work just fine. So I'll show you some. Actually, Doom runs pretty okay, so I'll go into uh, Doom and show you that. It even emulates the sound properly. It's a little bit laggy, but it does work. But you can play it. It's a little bit choppy, but you can play it. I had to turn graphics way, way down. But you can do it. You can play Doom on a surface with DOSBox. And this to me is just a lot of fun. It's fun messing around with this stuff. Seeing what you can do with it. So, you can do stuff like this in DOSBox. So you can do your retro gaming on here, thanks to uh, jailbreaking. There's an example. Where's another good one? Let's go into Epic Pinball and try that. There we go. On some games it'll lag like that. And then once it starts up it'll be fine. Like here. Let's play some Epic Pinball. Now keep in mind I've set all these games up to run properly on DOSBox on the surface, so obviously they won't run this perfectly to begin with. You have to set them up, assuming you know what you're doing. Oops, I tilted the... Uh... Ah! You need shift to do that, okay. I had to turn, the gra I had to turn it pretty... See, the paddles lag a little bit. So, you know, there's certain issues you can have with this sort of thing. I don't know why I hit that button. But, you know, DOS gaming is not perfect because it has to emulate x86 on an ARM processor, similar to how on a, on a PowerPC Mac, DOSBox has to emulate x86 on top of PowerPC architecture. So, obviously, it's not going to be the best performance in the world. But if you just want to run old software, like... Windows 3.1 in DOSBox or Windows 95 even, it'll, it'll work. I'm not sure how well 95 will work, but 3.1 does work. I know that much. So that's just an example of what you can do by jailbreaking the device. You can run stuff like DOSBox and Notepad++ and Audacity, applications you probably find very useful. So that is the Microsoft Surface RT and my review of it. What is my conclusion? 
I like it. It's a very fun device. It's a very nice departure from uh, Apple that I've, uh, the mobile world of Apple that I've been using for so long. This is one of the few devices that really intrigued me, one that I really had a desire to use. Uh, this device and the Google Next, Nexus 7 and 10 uh, were the few that I really took a serious look at, and this one ended up being the one I chose based on the functionality. Would I recommend this device? Yes, depending on what kind of person you are. I'm a person that likes to tinker. I'm, in general, I'm not the hugest fan in the world of uh, iOS and Android. I mean, they both seem really sort of mundane to me. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Apple's app ecosystem is fantastic. It has a lot of really nice applications in it. Android's uh, ecosystem is also fantastic. They have a lot of apps, especially ones that I would find useful. But the problem with that is the devices I just haven't found very compelling. And this is a device I found compelling because it was a new player to the game. It wasn't just your traditional tablet. It was something, com it was something, it was a tablet plus, plus, plus. Uh, it was a tablet with a built-in metal stand, a tablet with a full USB port, a keyboard you could detach at will. Uh, it was a, it's a hybrid device. It's, it, it, it's an interesting idea, and I really like the idea. So the hardware and the device itself and, and what it was really compelled me towards it. Uh, the same thing, you, you could say the same thing about the Surface Pro, though. Uh, but the Surface Pro is a full-on Core i5 experience, whereas this is just, you know, a traditional tablet experience with an ARM chip in it, which is what most tablets are. That's what the iPad is, that's what... Uh, the Nexus, the Google Nexus 7 and Nexus uh, 10 are, you know, they're tablets with ARM processors in them. So this is sort of on that playing field. And comparing that this to those, there's a few value adds that are important, like the fact that there's a full desktop browser in there, the IE10. Uh, you get Flash right out of the box in there because it comes with IE10. Uh, the fact, at least uh, compared to iOS, you get some of the built-in apps, you just get a lot more out of them rather than having to go at third-party ones that give you more options. Like the weather app, for example, how it gives you all this information built-in. Uh, rather than on iOS, you'd have to go download WeatherBug or something to get all this information. Uh, again, the fact that it comes with Office, uh, I think that's a huge value add to me anyway because I was planning on using this particular uh, thing for doing schoolwork and you know that, that's exactly what you need for schoolwork is office so you know there you have it now comparing this to other arm tablets this is there are things in here that scream computer like the desktop for example uh, like have been like uh, what's been said in other reviews but I think that's a plus because that that brings the hybrid idea more to fruition because you have the keyboard here it's still a computer, but at the same time, it's still a tablet. They've married the best of both worlds in a way that I think is fantastic. Um, and this is on an ARM platform. You get a full desktop browser on an ARM platform. You get a nice office suite on an ARM platform. And you can jailbreak it and get some traditional apps on an ARM platform. I think that's really cool for an ARM on. Uh, on an ARM platform to continue repeating myself. I sound like a broken record. But compared to, with other ARM tablets, I really like this. Uh, and for the money, I think um, that has its own value to it. The ecosystem in the store with the modern UI apps will grow over time. I think that needs time to bake, obviously, because uh, not every app that's on Android or iOS is in here. And I don't think every single app will be, but I think a majority of the good ones will probably come to this in due time. It, it's just going to take a while for this ecosystem to grow, in, it needs more developers on board, but I really like it. I think, I think it's a great idea, and I think that in itself will continue to live on. Even if the Surface doesn't and Windows RT doesn't, I think the idea itself will live on in things like Windows 8 and the Windows Blue that's going to replace Windows 8 and things like that. So. In my opinion, it's a great device. It's not for everybody, but it's a great device. I really like it. I'm, I, I've had a lot of fun with it so far, and I think I will continue to do so.
Now, comparing this with the, uh, the Surface Pro, th there's almost no comparison. The Surface Pro is a much more powerful, more capable uh, Surface than this is. This is, this is kind of the budget model, as it were. It, and that's kind of the reason I got it. It does all I need it to. I don't need it to do any more than, you know, my schoolwork and, and the Internet, really. I mean, it's nice that it does other things than that, but that's all I really needed it to do in a crucial way. So, I'm very happy with it. I, I, I like the device so far. It's, it's not for everybody, but it, it, it does have its place, I think. So, who is this device for? I think it's for a, tra a traveling, casual computer user. Uh, it, it, it could replace a laptop that somebody uses for just, just looking at Facebook or the Internet easily. Just like any tablet could. But this tablet has the full-on browser, and I think that's the biggest value add to this, along with Office. Uh, it, it, it feels more like a traditional PC while at the same time being a tablet. That's what makes the Surface a great device and that's why I like it. I understand what they were trying to do with it. And hopefully as time goes by other people will start to understand too because their idea is fantastic. It's just that it's such a drastic change from what people were used to that there's a lot of backlash. So hopefully that'll change in the future and the ecosystem of uh, applications will grow and along with all that. But myself, I like this device. I like it a lot. It has a lot of things that really make it stand out from other tablets on the market. Mainly the hybrid design with the keyboard and the built-in stand, the full USB port, the fact that it comes with a full desktop browser with Flash and comes with Microsoft Office built in when you get it. So there's a lot of advantages to this device compared with other tablets that really attracted me to it. Uh, and that's the reason I ended up getting it. At the, even though it's not quite as capable as the Surface Pro, it still does everything I need. And reasons there, you may be asking me why I didn't get the Surface Pro. Well, number one, money. Uh, I don't think the price of it was worth it. And number two, they get the Surface Pros get very hot, and the battery life is nowhere near as good as the Surface RT. That's those are the other uh, reasons that I didn't get it. The battery life being a huge thing, this thing can get about eight eight to nine hours of battery, whereas the uh, Surface Pro gets about four to five, and that's not an all day battery like I really need for a device like this. And the RT has that battery life along with the functionality I need. So it was a perfect compromise, I think. Uh, it does less, but what it does do is very important to me, and having that battery life for those things, I think, is very important. So that's an, uh, those are a couple, the main two reasons that I chose the Surface RT over the Surface Pro. No doubt the Surface Pro is an amazing device. It's very smooth and very fast to use and runs all your traditional applications just fine. But at the same time, you know, there's some drawbacks to it that I really didn't like, like the heat and the battery life, or um, mainly the battery life being the things that I didn't like. So that's the reason I got the Surface RT over the Surface Pro. So those are reasons that I decided to get the Surface RT, and I've been very happy with it uh, because I've had because I have very specific usage scenarios for it, whereas I'm sure other some other people don't. They just want to get on there and use it like a tra traditional PC when it really isn't a traditional PC, but it has some of the experiences of a traditional PC. So all in all, um, I like the Surface RT. It fits my needs very well. Um, the thing, what really drove me was trying one out. I urge, uh, if any of you haven't gone to the Microsoft Store or a Best Buy or something, or even a Staples, and try one of these out, do so. Because for, that changed my opinion of these, was actually going out and using them. Like, sit down for half an hour at the Microsoft Store and just play around with one of these. It might change your opinion, because actually using these is a great experience. I, I, I didn't even think about getting one of these until I used it. And also a recommendation from a friend. Uh, I know I knew another, I know one person who has these, has one of these, and uh, he was telling me about what you could do with these, the fact that you could jailbreak them, and you know that kind of pushed me over the edge because the jailbreaking part I was like, ooh, that's going to be fun, <laughs> and it turns out it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of uh, you know porting of open source applications going on. There's just a whole ecosystem within itself there as well. So. The whole experience for me has been a lot of fun, and I really like this device. So, 
can I tell you can I tell you who this is for? Not really. <laughs> I'd say it's for the casual user and uh, someone who wants to tinker with Windows RT at, at best. It's really hard to say who this is for. I think if you want to know if this is for you, you should go to the mall and try it out at a Microsoft store. Um, or Best Buy or any store and try it out for yourself. That's the best judgment I think you can make on it, is just to go try it yourself. Try before you buy. So, my review of the window of the uh, Surface RT, good. For my needs, it's good. So, the hardware is great. The software is pretty good. It's a great device. I really like it, in my opinion. So, there you have it, guys. That's my... Uh, opinions and review on the uh, the Surface RT. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and have a good one everybody. Ciao.